Okay, uh, I know it's been a minute, so welcome back. Um, today we're going to look at introducing this, uh, not just a scene transition, but an effect to go with it, where we're fading to and from white as we go from one scene to another. You can change this to be however you want to. You can animate that so that it's um, wiping in, or you can make it black, or all kinds of stuff. But let's uh, let's get right into it. Okay, so where we left off, we have our room transfer system working where we can move from one scene to another, but there's an issue with that that we need to fix right away. Uh, so if I go from this scene, and then I transition into the house scene, and then let's say I quit playing now, um, if I go back to my sample scene and hit play, since I went through the transfer, the player is going to check to see where it should start and it thinks it should start over here because things don't line up between the two scenes um, and you couldn't you shouldn't expect them to and now i've got some super weird stuff going on so uh, let's fix this so first thing we have to do is go to our scripts and i want to go to my uh, scene transition script let's open that up in visual studio um, and i actually want to go to the vector value script as well so inside scriptable objects, open up the vector value script. So inside the vector value script here, what I want to do is I want to add, just like we did for the float value, um, another uh, another thing that this is inheriting from. So uh, after where it says scriptable object, I'm going to add I serialization callback receiver. And that's going to turn red right away. Um, and that's because we have to add two specific methods. One is public void on after deserialize. And the other is public void before serialize. And then that red should go away, unless I did them wrong. Oh, and we have to actually do something with them. So um, after, here's what I'm going to do. Just like with the float value, I'm going to add another uh, vector two. I'm going to call this public vector two, and we'll call this default value. And then after deserialize, I'm going to say initial, oop, no, 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 it's not an argument. What am I doing? Uh, I'm going to say, initial value is equal to default value and then it should be okay on before serialize oh it's on before serialize there we go all right cool so if i save this now i'm going to go back into unity and i'm going to find my scriptable object for my player position and i've got an initial value which is saved from when I went into the house. And now I'm gonna make a default value. So I'm gonna say my initial value is zero, negative three, which is what it was when we went into the house. And my default value is 13, negative 13, which is the default value for here. So if I hit play, um, start in the middle of the screen. There we go. And if I go up into the house, and now if I go out of play uh, and then go back into play, it should be fine. And there we go. All right, cool. So now, um, right now it's pretty abrupt when we're going from one scene to another. So let's make it so that we have a nice scene transition effect. And the scene transition effect we're gonna go for here is a uh, fade to white and a fade from white. You can do black or gray or um, you can even animate it with like, panels coming in so that you have like a wipe going on. But I'm just going to keep it simple and go to and from white. So uh, to do this, I'm going to zoom way out so I can see my UI. I'm going to go to create and I'm going to create a new canvas. So not just a panel, but an entirely new canvas. And I'm going to name this canvas uh, fade from white. And then as a child of this, I'm going to make a panel. You can do an image. It honestly doesn't matter. And for my panel, uh, I'm going to make it fully opaque. 
And then over here in the source image spot, I'm going to change this from background to none so that I get this nice pure white. Now I'm also going to add a new component. I'm going to add an animator. And then over here in the animation window, I'm going to create a new animation. And I'm going to put this in my animations folder. And in my animations folder, I'm going to make a new folder for fade panels. And then in here, this is going to be fade from white. And I'll save that. Uh, now to animate it, I'm going to hit the record button and make sure that this records it as fully opaque. And I want this to be fast, so I'm going to go about a third of a second out. And this is going to be fully transparent. And there we go. Now I'm just going to make this fade from white um, a prefab. So if I go to my prefabs, pull in fade from white, and now I can delete it from the scene. And now I'm going to go into my uh, scene transition script, which we opened up just a minute ago. I'm going to create a reference to this fade in panel. So we're going to call this public uh, game object fade in panel. And then I'm going to make a really quick awake method here. Public, actually not public, void awake. I'm using awake because it gets called before start. And what I want to do is I want to say if fade in panel is not null, so if it's been assigned, so if it's a scene where I haven't assigned it, I'm not going to cause any issues, then I'm going to instantiate it. So I'm going to instantiate it as a game object so I can do stuff with it. So game object panel is equal to instantiate, fade in panel, and as far as where I'm going to put it, since it's a canvas, it doesn't really matter. I can put it anywhere. So I'm just going to put it at, oops, accidentally hit my touchpad there. I want to put it at vector 3.0 and quaternion dot identity. And I'm going to make sure that that gets stored as a game object. All right, now that I have that panel, I want to make sure that it's not cluttering up my hierarchy. So I'm going to destroy it after a second. So destroy panel after one second. All right, so if I go into Unity now, I'm going to find my scene transition object as soon as my scripts are done compiling. <laughs> okay, there we go. And I'm going to take my fade from white panel, and put that right there. And if I hit play, I should see it work right away. Oh, ha, okay, cool. So what happened there was um, the animation looped. So what I have to do is go to my animation, uh, fade panels, fade from white, and turn off loop time. And let's try that again. So if we hit play, all right, and there we go. So we got our nice fade from white. Now, I want it to fade to white when we transition between scenes. So I'm going to make another panel here. So I'm going to create a UI canvas. I'm going to call this one fade to white. And I'm going to go through the same process with this. I'm going to add a uh, panel as an object. I'm going to reset all of this animator, and then this time instead of going from white to transparent, I'm going to go from transparent to white. So I'm going to fast forward through this process here. Okay, and same thing, I'm going to make sure that my fade to white animation also has loop time turned off, and then I'm going to add that panel to my prefabs. Now you might have a whole bunch of these. <coughs> So it's worth taking a second and in your prefabs, making a new folder. And this is going to be our fade panels. And then I'm just going to put these in here. There we go. All right, cool. Now I can delete this from my room since I'm going to be instantiating it. And um, 
Well, let's take a look at our room transition here really fast. So right now I'm just automatically loading the scene. It's not what I want to do anymore. Now I'm going to use something called an async operation to load the scene um, while this one is still there. And I can use that to load the scene while I'm doing the fade, which makes that fade like a loading screen. It's a way to kind of hide your loading times. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a couple new variables here. First, I'm going to create a public game object. I'm going to call this fade out panel. And then another one for how long I want that, um, that loading to always wait at least. So I'm going to call this public float. We'll call this fade wait. All right. So now I'm going to create um, an enumerator, which is a way that you can kind of bake pauses into your game. So I'm going to do public I enumerator, and I'll call this um, fade control, or actually, let's call this fade coroutine. Now, what I want to do is first I want to wait those uh, however long I need to. Well, actually, first I want to create the panel, and then I want to wait. So I'm going to, uh, let's say, instantiate fade out panel, uh, and I want to do vector3.0 quaternion.identity. Now, just like before, I only want to do this if one actually exists, so I'm going to say if fade out panel is not equal to null, then I'll do this. And then after I actually fade out, I'll have it wait for a small amount of time. So I'll say yield return new wait for seconds, and I want to wait the fade wait. After I've done that, I'm going to create the async operations. So I'm going to say async operation, and I'm just going to call it async operation, um, is equal to scene manager dot load scene async and the scene I want to load is scene to load I feel like I'm doing this really fast and then while it's still loading I want it to wait and then that way once it's loaded we'll just go automatically so I'll say while not async operation dot is done so while it's not done loading I'm just going to yield return null, which means that when it is done, we'll load the scene. And then this scene will be taken out of memory, which is why I don't have to worry about destroying this game object. Because it's not going to sit around in the hierarchy, because the whole scene gets destroyed. Um, okay, cool. So I'm going to save my script here. Pop back into Unity. Um, and I'll let that compile for a second and look at my scene transitions. And my fade panels here. Okay, so scene transition, uh, fade to white. And then for my wait time, I'm going to say 0.33 seconds because I made it a third of a second. So uh, let's try this out. If I hit play, I should see it fade from white to clear. There we go. And if I go into the other room, Oh, ha, I never called that coroutine. Good lord. All right. So I commented out this line, but I didn't put the calling the coroutine to replace it. So uh, to start a coroutine, you just do start coroutine, and then the name of the coroutine, which in this case is fade co. There we go. So if we save that, I'm going to go back into Unity. Let's hit play. Yeah, I'm too impatient. I need to learn to be more patient. Um, all right, cool. So we faded from white, and we're going to fade to white. But then we had this abrupt thing here. Now, we're protecting against null, but let's take a look at that other scene. Um, let's go to our, where is it? Scenes, good lord. And let's look at our house interior. Save this scene. Let's go to our scene transition. 
our prefabs. Um, fade in panel is going to be fade from white. Fade out panel is going to be fade to white. And this way you could have a bunch of different, like maybe if you're going into a dungeon, maybe you want that to be black instead of white. Um, I just like the fade to white. I think it's kind of cool. Uh, you can, of course, do anything different. You can animate those panels so that they slide in. Mirror, mirror. You do all kinds of Star Wars wipes. So I'm going to hit play. And here we go. So now if I go, it's a nice little fade effect. There we go. It's not really something that's important for the game, but I think it adds a little bit of feeling to it. I think it's nice. All right, so next time we're going to talk about how to make a little, um, it's not a dialogue, but it's a little effect on the character when they're near something interactable. Like these signs, we're going to have a little um, question mark pop up above their head. And then when they walk away from it, we'll have the question mark go away. Uh, after that, we'll do treasure chests, and then we'll start working on the dungeons. There's a few things I have planned for the dungeons. So, um, yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the description down below. You can follow me on Twitter to find out when I post new videos. Um, I'm really going to try to get back on a, a schedule here. Hopefully the, the personal stuff that's kept me away, hopefully that's kind of ironed out now. So, yeah. Um, you can join my Discord, where I'm chatting pretty much every day. There's some really awesome people there. So, yeah, I hope everybody out there has themselves a wonderful day.